This is what we need to look for in life. Good every minute. Hi, I'm George the Antique Nomad. Come with me as I wander the country in search of valuable vintage, amazing antiques, and cool collectibles. We'll buy, sell, and trade at antique malls, shops, and shows, estate sales, flea markets, thrift stores, anywhere people go to find really interesting things that just aren't made anymore. So come on, let's go. People ask me what I look at when I'm in Seattle, and I'm very fortunate to share with a friend her lovely deluxe apartment in the Sky High High. My building is actually over there. That is referred to locally as the Purple Palace. It's set in place in actuality. It was built in 1959 to 60 as a demonstration of what mid-rise, mid-century condominium and apartment living could be. It was the first like it in the city, one of the first on the west coast. The end cap is all Mexican tile. And the center columns in the lavender are all Murano glass. And this is what has filled in around it. It definitely set a trend. It actually did very well in the last earthquake because it was built like a skyscraper. So it swayed and did not buckle which was wonderful because I was home at the time. I wanted to show you the rest of the haul from the rest of my trip. I ended up stopping at a fruit stand that also sells antiques in Selah, Washington, near Yakima. One of my favorite places to shop, actually. And they always have fun stuff. I also got to do a preview of an estate sale in Colorado and bought some neat things there. And I got to shop at a couple of little stores in Idaho along the way. So. I have some other goodies to show you. I thought this was really fun because this unzips and is where the batteries go in. It's a radio. There's the knobs. It is also a poodle. What more could you want? This one was made in Korea probably about 1980, but that's old enough to be vintage and definitely collectible. And it appears to work, so that's all very good. The cat, this is Treasure Craft. I wanted to show something about this. I almost didn't buy this, and I'll show you why. Because a lot of people don't understand the brown glaze is rubbed in, and I knew when I took this tape off that the dealer put on that I was going to end up with white spots. However, they are pretty faint. I'm pretty sure that with furniture polish and fine steel wool going with the grain, I should be able to restore that. So I went ahead and bought it anyway. Please be careful of how you use tape, folks. Really important that you know your merchandise and what kind of finishes you're putting things on. Avoid putting it on wood. Avoid putting it on unfinished stuff. Avoid putting tags on the fronts of pictures because where the tag is, if it sits long enough in a store, the tag will cause the print to fade and you'll see where the tag was forever and ever. Here's a bunch of Sprites and Pixies. I got a nice haul out of a store in Utah. This little guy is very cute, probably Japanese. This one's a Treasure Craft Sprite. You can tell by the impressions where the ears are. This one is by Gilner. They didn't do impressions in the ears, even though they did the bisque face and hand-painted like Treasure Craft did. This one's also Treasure Craft. This is called a Wee One. This is larger for the average Wee One. It's also different because it's got more than one color. But the wee ones usually had these little vests with the bow ties and also the impressed faces and ears. They came out in 1951. You'll see another wee one from Treasure Craft here. See the leaves impressed on the outfit? That's a way to tell. This one is missing its original paper label. This one's another Gilner. These two are a smaller California pottery company that did a lot of handwork, and they were a little sloppier, but they were cute. And there were chartreuse and forest green, so I got them both. The old signs, I thought, please do not ask for credit, was kind of fun and cool, and caution, eye protection required. A lot of people buy these signs to use, and they'll use them in an antique store, or they'll use them in some other place, like old hardware stores where vintage is appreciated. These three are hand puppets. These are all Walt Disney Productions, which is the important part. I believe I paid about $8 a piece for these. I expect them to sell for about $18 to $20 in Florida. Pluto has had the kind of day that Donald Duck usually has. 
Here is a Culver glass with roses. This is a little different. There's the Culver Limited label on it. We see a lot of interest in their modernism where it's a modernistic design in those colors. I haven't seen one in the roses. We'll see how that goes. And then the Paymaster. Now we literally used to use these as door stops because they're nice and heavy and because nobody wanted an old check writer. But look how cool that deco style is. They made the same ones well into the 60s, and so you'll see the warning about unauthorized personnel on the later ones. These are selling for about $40 now. Old office equipment is collectible again, and yes, you can still use them. Now, this is a piece that when I first got in the business would have sold for a lot of money. I don't think they sell for a ton now, probably $25 or so. They used to sell for $65 because these are the child's plates in the Desert Rose, but they work great for relishes as well. That's why you've got the three sections to keep the food apart. It's got what they call the TV logo, which is the old TV screen shape. Gladding McBean Franciscan Earthenware Made in USA is what that all says. And the TV shape logo is from the 60s. A couple of wall pockets here. I love the exotic bird. And then the peacock. The peacock was only $5. I couldn't say no to that. And this guy was at a roadside garage sale in Oregon. I picked him up, asked how much. The gal said a dollar. I gave her the dollar. Her mother came running over and said, I wanted a lot more than that, and you quit giving prices out to people. So I smiled and offered more, and she said no, and I went to the car and drove away. This is a bronze. It's a small bronze, but the important thing is I figured, was he holding something that's broken? A lot of times that happens on bronzes, but there's no sign of breakage on either end. So he is just holding this rod, and he's well done, and he has some age. You can see some wear from being handled on the high points. I think this piece might date back as early as 1900. So I was happy to get it. It was surprisingly inexpensive. I believe it was under $10. The Hager piece here I paid $15 for, but that color is popular now, and I'm sure it'll sell. And then these are Blanco from about 30 years ago when the deep purple was in style. These are Matt Carter designs. He was one of their last big designers. Here's a third one down here. They're going to look great in a display together. I really feel like with the interest in pink tones coming back that purple is right around the corner. I picked up the Everly Brothers because I do sell in Kentucky and I go to the flea market very close to where they grew up. And because it said promotion not for sale, which means that this was given out originally to a radio station. And the sale I got to preview, in fact, they were involved in that business, and so I was able to get a couple of albums that said promotion not for sale. Whether they're worth a lot more than the regular one, I have not looked yet, but I know that's something to look for, so I gave it a try. And then, of course, I had to get this because it's a classic, has to have a space in my Christmas display coming up here. The cast iron horse I thought would be nice for a wall, and it was older and good quality and a heavier casting, probably from about 1950. The two on the left are talcum. This one, Spana Cuba, is a type of tobacco I've not heard of before. And then this is Imperial Smoking Mixture, Ginter and Pope. And I have a feeling that that might be of some value. Talc by Coty. The Coty ones, all of these cost me about $6 each, and the Coty ones alone are worth about $30 apiece. So. I was really happy because of the graphics and because it'll just be a nice visual thing to have in a space. And then another tobacco tin from a company that was Canadian and seemed to sell for decent prices. Last but not least of the haul is this big platter, restaurant size platter for Western Traveler. This was a Tepco pattern from the 1950s, and these big platters sell for about $75. You don't see this size often. You can see a couple of Afghans, too, that I got. This dates to 1884, and these are the leaders of the Prohibition Party. This was published in Chicago and printed in New York. 
So these were people who wanted to bring about the end of drinking. And eventually they were successful. The party itself never held major elected office, but they swayed the conversation and eventually swayed the public to join them in sobriety as a legal matter for a period of 15 years. And it turned out it didn't work too well, so eventually prohibition was overturned. So this is the beginning of the prohibition movement, and this is a pretty valuable piece. I imagine even with the damage, probably a couple of hundred dollars, I'm actually going to send a picture to the restorer to see if it would be worth having this tear repaired. Among the famous of their time, Francis E. Willard, but who you will not see here, you will not see Carrie Nation. Carrie Nation was rather a radical. She was out vandalizing bars in the West and taking things into her own hands rather than waiting for the Prohibition Party to try to use the machinations of politics to push the agenda. This is the view to the east. This is historic Seattle. It's one of the few old homes from the turn of the century, the old manors that were built in this neighborhood. Most of them got knocked down because this hill used to be 20 feet higher and Seattle regraded a lot of its hills between the 1890s and the 1920s. So a lot of the buildings like this one with the chimneys are gone. But that one is Stimson Green Mansion. The Stimsons and the Greens were involved in the lumber industry and did very well. Their heirs are big benefactors to the city. You can see we're getting some lovely fall colors. Well, I have plenty to do. I'm packed. I'm really happy to be getting things in order and we'll show you more adventures along the way. Well, this is sort of the ultimate social distancing. I have Mount Rainier in the background behind me and what a beautiful scene. I'm in Mount Rainier National Park. This is the last leg of the journey going west and the first leg of the journey going back east. Well, I got off here in Twin Falls, Idaho. You can see the big bridge and then I'm gonna turn the camera the other way. You really know that you're out west once you get to these parts because it sure looks like it. And it is truly beautiful in a different way. If you folks from the East haven't been to the West still, you really owe it to yourselves to see. It's just so very different. Pretty incredible place. How did that bull get on that route? Well, it's fall here in Utah. I'm in Brigham City. You can see the fall colors up the hillside. Utah is actually a very pretty place. I've never stopped in Brigham City before, but this large old building of unclear origin that now says Furniture and More is the home of Second Chances Antiques and More. So we'll hope for a lot of antiques and less and more. I am upstairs looking at the overflow loft because it's the only place where the music isn't so loud that I can actually record. This is a really cool laundry cart made of bamboo slat, marked QMC Laundry. Some hallmarks of age, definitely. I mean, you can tell it's actually been used. And it's even a little bit bent up here down at the bottom. I would say that this probably dates to the 1940s, 50s, 60s even, and it's priced at about 300. It would be a really cool thing to make into a big table or maybe a storage bin of some sort again. Here's another example of finding something in a place that doesn't belong. 
This is from Falstaff Beer. It was to hold your licenses saying you were allowed to operate a tavern. Well, we're in Utah. They're not really into that here. But over in St. Louis, they love Falstaff because that's where it came from. So this has to come with me. Currently, I am in Ogden, Utah, and this is the base of the Wasatch Mountains. Through those mountains, you get to Wyoming, and that's where I'm headed on the return lake of my trip. The Union Pacific Railroad came through here, and the Golden Spike, where it met the railroad from California and made the first transcontinental transportation possible, other than by horseback or wagon train, well, that's only about 20 miles west of here. The reason I'm here is because of the estate sale antiques. I discovered this place a little over a year ago. Had some fun here, bought some neat stuff, including a bunch of little miniature beer bottles from the 50s. Ogden was founded by the railway and not by the Mormons, so a little more liberal as far as drinking and such things than the rest of the state. This place, I came back to because I had fun and bought good things and also because unfortunately I hear they are going out of business. Now as much as I hate the idea of their antique store going out of business, it does happen. People retire, they decide it's too cold in Utah and they want to go to Arizona, although it's beautiful here today. But as a reseller, this place had a lot of good quality things that were fairly priced for collectors but not available to me as a reseller, but going out of business sales, oftentimes people give good bargains because they don't want to take it with them. We're gonna go in here and see if the sales are good. We might end up with a neat bunch of stuff to fill the rest of my van. Well, right away it says everything's 20% off unless marked firm or marked with a higher discount. They have some nice stacking lawyers bookcases and boy, these sell really well in Seattle where I just was and could have used one. But I'm not going that direction now, so I guess those are going to stay. Let's see what the old beer we have. Mm, let's see how much this is. And here is a lovely toilet seat cover. It's very classy and full of really great advice, so I'll take it. It's only $4. Speaking of classy, here's a lovely, beautiful piece of Wedgwood, except, wait, it's plastic. It's plastic, made in the USA from the 1960s. Can you believe that? From a distance, it's actually not a bad look. I was very surprised. I did not know that someone did fake Jasperware in plastic before. Here's some Army stretchers priced in the $45 range, so I guess that's $35 with the discount. Not a bad price. People, strangely enough, are making tables out of these, putting the legs up and then putting glass over them. Long enough since the Atlanta Olympics for this to be vintage. It's 25 years old, and it's a big banner for the torch relay. It's only $20 with the discount, and I've done well with other Atlanta Olympic items that were street banners, so I'm going to take this and give it a try. Here's a Treasure Craft Tiki ashtray. This would be with the discount, I believe $16, and I would buy it except look at that white. That is called efflorescence. That happened when they were making things. They only ran the Hawaiian plant six months of the year because of this. If it started to get really humid and they were on the wet side of Maui, the moisture would get trapped under the brown and create this white chalkiness that they could not get rid of. So you can't really do anything about that. Plus, it's also got a bad factory flaw on its nose. It's not supposed to be shaped like that. This would have been made at the end of the season when the molds were getting worn out and they really needed to wrap up production. So it was a factory second and there's nothing that'll change that. So I'm gonna leave it behind, sadly enough, because I sure could use one of these. I can always sell anything Olympia beer in Centralia, Washington, where I have a space because they were brewing 20 miles up the road, and there's a lot of people there who still collect, so I'll take that for $8. Here's some neat old pins. You've got the McGuire sisters here. They were not running for office, but they were a very famous singing group. Nothing like a dame. I suspect this is for one of the first women to run for office. Nixon now, 1960. It took until 68, actually. 
I had completely forgotten about this. I had this toy as a child. The Verde Bird Air Police. The helicopter went around sometimes, like it was supposed to. Sometimes you could even lift the little car by its hook and take it off the track. It didn't work tremendously well, but it's cool to see in the original box. It's only $25 minus 20%, but it is as is. So that means something's missing or it doesn't work. So I guess I'm gonna pass on that childhood memory, but I'll have to look for one that works. These little felt and fur moccasins with the embroidery are cute. I don't know that they're Native American, but they've got a good look for 20 bucks. I think I'll take a look. And there's an opium pipe. It's got all the pieces. That's gonna be early 1900s, it looks like, from the etching. It was not always illegal. And the pipes were not illegal to have even afterwards, and people would buy them as novelties. Price on that is 52 with the discount. That's actually pretty good. Almost cheap enough for resale, but probably not quite. So while I'm thinking of it, please comment in the space below here, and also hit the thumbs up button to like this video. If you haven't subscribed, click the subscribe button below. Also, hit the bell below to be notified of new videos coming every Monday and Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. And thank you so much for following along. Let's go back to this video. These old showroom photo prints of Chevrolets are collectible. I've sold some before, but they tend to like the hotter cars. This was the car my grandfather had. In fact, this was his very last car, so... Not exactly a sexy thing. I had a friend who had one of these, a Chevy Monza. It was a horrible car. Cramped, didn't run well. Now the Corvette would be a hot one to buy, but unfortunately the condition is really poor on this one. These are only $10 each, so if I can find any in good shape that are decent cars, then we'll get them. The Sport Coupe, does that look sporty to you? You can tell why General Motors had trouble in the 80s. There's the Landau version with the vinyl top. Half a vinyl top. There's the sedan. Now wagons are popular again, and this one's a little older. That might go with me. Ooh, the Chevette. A very badly designed car. Did not do well. There is a reason General Motors went bankrupt. And you're looking at a lot of those reasons right here, unfortunately. Barney's Market Club was a famous place for steaks and very strong cocktails in Chicago back in the day. And these ashtrays that say, yes sir, senators, refers to the fact that the owner could never remember anyone's name, so he'd just refer to you as senator if you asked for something. These were made by Royal China, and wow, at $4 with the discount, this is a well-known old hot spot, so I'm going to get this cafe piece. And here on the list of strange things George didn't know he wanted until he saw it, this is an old shopping lane sign, and I believe it would have been lit originally, and I think someone will repurpose this into a cute lamp, especially because it's adjustable. It's only $20 before the discount. This is how grocery store markers were done when I was a very, very, very small child. Well, if you ever hear anyone referred to as a chatty Kathy, it means the person saying that probably grew up in the 60s and had this doll. Mattel's chatty Kathy, the talking doll. And she said all sorts of stuff. Guess what she'll say next? Let's open it up and see what she looks like. She looks like she's got all the accessories. She's priced at $149. If the talker works, that's not an unusual price because she is pretty famous in the doll collecting world. If you just happen to have the end of a spare missile laying around, what a cool way to use it. Look at this table. It's got such a mid-century vibe to it because of the shape of the base. Gotta say, I've never seen anyone repurpose a bomb like that before. It's priced at $280 with the discount. We have a fireman's helmet, except it's a firewoman's helmet. And then a really good washer bin from an old auto parts store. Well, there's lots of matchbook collectors. I used to be one when I was a kid. But these are particularly interesting to me because 
They say on top that they are for your use, fresh matches. It says carry no others, search your pockets. All matches are prohibited in the plant. Celluloid Corporation did not dare have matches used because celluloid is highly flammable and the whole plant would have burned down. So these are kind of interesting and for $2 for a pack, I think I'll take them because I can probably sell them for a couple bucks each. Here is a plate you'll only see in Utah and Mormon territory. This has a description of the house built by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in 1841 in Nauvoo, Illinois and was sold by Zion's Mercantile. It's got the various elders and founders of the church involved. Nauvoo, of course, is a historic site now and it was a town where the Mormons came and were driven out and that's why they came to Utah where they could be left alone. This is a little scratched but this is a great deal. Now Savage is low end as far as rifles are but this is chrome from about the 1940s. It would have been a box for maybe a dresser box or possibly to hold ammunition. It's got an old school maker mark on the bottom and it's got a wood liner so it could also be used as a humidor. It's only $12 before the discount, so that is definitely going with me. I think that's a real find. If this didn't have a hole, I'd be interested in it because it's the Seven Dwarves. This is not a wildly exciting one because the color is fairly ordinary, but this is a spun fiberglass lamp from the 1960s. It looks like it's not damaged or crunched. They've gotten pretty hard to find, and with the discount, it's about $50 and I can afford to pay that nowadays because they've really gone up so I'm going to get it. So I always notice the Disney stuff when I'm on my way to Florida but what I see that I like even better are these two really wild crazy ceramic owl figures because they are Jaru pottery out of California from about 1980 and Jaru is considered very good high quality interesting design modernism these days. They are going to be about $22 each with the discount, and that's actually cheap enough for me to buy, so I'm going to take them. This turquoise Fenton seems to have been really popular in Utah. I see it every time I come here, and it's a great deep color that you don't see as much elsewhere. 36 on that one, and about 25 on that one. Very fair prices, um, not enough discount for resale. But I found out something interesting. One of the dealers here is going to take this place over. The owners are moving to Idaho, so it's not closing permanently. They're just having a sale to sell down inventory while they get ready to retire. And there's also a big show in Salt Lake this weekend. I wish I could stay and go to it. So the place is a little stripped, but I'm still finding some really cool stuff at good prices. We don't see much Navy cutlery. Two United States Navy cutlasses here. Now, the one closest to us is genuine from the First World War. And it would have been for dress because it's got the lion head. This wasn't necessarily meant for battle. The one behind it with the U.S. in it is actually a reproduction. It's a little too good. You can kind of tell the difference too, even in the coloration of the brass. The reproduction is a little less brassy looking. It doesn't have any patina. The other one definitely does. This is what we need to look for in life. Good every minute. Well, here's a lamp I've never seen before. Puss in Boots. Puss in Boots get us a bad rap because people think that he was a dandy, but the reason he got the boots is because he was very brave. Read the story. Puss in Boots is a great guy. This is half off, which would make it $30, and that's a pretty good deal. I don't know if it's a reseller deal or not, because I'm not sure who made this. It would have been an American company from the 1940s. The red is cold painted, so you could rub it off if you weren't careful. So the fact that it's in good shape matters a lot. Well, the good news is it appears that estate sale antiques will be here when I come back to Ogden again, which is great because Ogden is a stop on the route. Salt Lake and Sandy and a bunch of other places around here have good antiquing too, so we'll have to do more of Utah, well, maybe next season when I come through. Well, I'm way out west where I belong with my friend the dinosaur. I hope to get a little shopping in today, and then I've got one more day on my trip. Hello? I, I really need to be making faster time than I am, but... Yeah, I'm in the western part. It's really windy.
didn't think I had any battery left in my camera, but since I found out I do, and I really like the gals who run this place, I thought, well, I would like to include them with some footage, so I came back. So this shoe shine stand with the skeleton, I just think that's great. I think that's priced at $9.50. And then here's a bunch of different swung bases, carnival glass and trunk bases from the 19-teens all the way to the 1950s and an Italian one in the back in the butterscotch. But this piece, which has the same shape, is ceramic because this is Francoma pottery. This is by Grace Frank, the wife of the founder. She did the Grace Tone orbit that I showed in the last video, and she also designed this. This was one of their series vases that they only did limited numbers of in the late 60s and through the 1970s. This is a form of repurposing that's really popular lately, taking all of these old tools and creating new objects out of them. Oftentimes it's lamps. I have actually sold a coffee table that one guy made out of a bunch of old wrenches. It was fantastic, I have to say. Sometimes you'll see it done in art form, like this horse head. All of those are chain and utensils and gears and a horseshoe, appropriately enough. It's really cool to see people's imagination play into this, and it is a form of folk art that is current now, but I think is going to carry on. Here's a nice bunch of Van Briggle pieces. This peachy colored one with the Art Nouveau flower at 595 is one you don't see so often. We are in the right part of the country to see Van Briggle. Here you can get a good look at one of the signatures. They did various signatures over the years that help you date the pieces now. This is a really cute little doll's trunk or toy trunk with the liner still intact. That's generally missing in these. And it even has the lithograph with the young lady on the top. It's in really good condition as these go. They were not made to last 120 or 130 years. And that's a nice price. I believe I see 55 on it. For a collector, that's really quite a good deal. It's a really pretty one. Just the right amount of wear to let you know that it's 130 years old and absolutely genuine. Now here's another classic style of 1950s telephone rotary dial desk model, but it's a little different in that the corners are canted. You're gonna see that when I pick it up in the back. The front corners are also cut at an angle. This is by Stromberg Carlson, and you see the prong clips there. Those were the original that used to hook into the wall. But now you can either get an adapter for those, or if you can't find an adapter, you can take the bottom plate off and wire in a modern phone jack so it'll work. And speaking of plates, well, here's a bunch of license plates from all over, mainly Nebraska here. You see a lot of Midwest ones, but you don't see this one too often from Nebraska because it's got the Art Deco State Capitol that was built, one of the few states with an Art Deco style capitol there in Lincoln from 1940. Quilts tell stories in many different ways, and some of them are rather literal about it. This is a names quilt, and what that means is there was a quilting bee. This one's dated 1935, and I noticed in the Depression, there's a lot of these. I think people were bored and looking for something to do. So they'd have a quilting bee, and all the women in an area would come and make a quilt for someone, perhaps a newlywed, and sign their names to it as a remembrance. And this one has the names all around the edges. Sometimes these tell what town they're from. Sometimes they actually have the center panel dedicated to the recipient with their name on it. So it's an interesting area of quilts that's a specific thing to collect other than just by pattern or color. And it's also interesting because it's dated, as you see in the corner here. Ah, beer. This clearly came out of a 1960s corner store. It's 50 bucks. So the parish print here is Daybreak, and this is a particularly nice one in that the color is strong and original. It's not a reproduction because it has the softness of colors as opposed to the ones reprinted in the 60s and the 90s. And it's also got the nice frame from the period, so it really has everything you want. And so does this. It's a great Shriners license plate, the name of course means something different now, so that makes it doubly interesting, and $59. So this is a large shelf unit full of Van Briggle pottery. I'm going to pick up a few of these vases and just quickly show you the bottoms. 
I don't expect you to be able to retain all of this because I certainly have to look it up. There were a lot of different marks at Van Briel because they had a lot of different artists who worked for them over the years. They were founded in 1901 and were one of the first big businesses in Colorado Springs in the early, early days of the town. They did beautiful Art Nouveau design. You see the dragonfly there. That's one of their original pieces. Artist Van Briegel, who was the founder along with his wife, died in 1904, just a few years after they started, but she managed to carry it on using his designs and expanding on it. And through various seasons and changes, they managed to stay in business for a hundred years. That's a really handsome piece. The Native American figures in the Van Briegel are also very popular lines. The glazes also have to do a bit with the popularity. You see the butterfly here, and this is the mulberry glaze, one of several two-tone glazes that they did. Then they did some more modern things in later years, and you'll see variations on the theme. As far as the signatures, you'll see Anna Van Briggle, that was the daughter who did some of the designs. That's her signature there, but that's actually a 1950s piece when they got more into modernism. They were able to transcend styles for a long time because of the real elemental simplicity and yet good quality of the wear. These pieces can sell anywhere from about $25 to over 1000 for a rare one. Sure, she's pretty, she's elegant, she's got the look, but she is an imposter. That is a fake Noritake Nippon mark. They didn't make head vases like this back in the 1930s, so they would never have a Nippon mark. This, on the other hand, is quite real, and this is Dalton. Not Royal Dalton. Royal Dalton was not always royal. In fact, in England, if you were to use the term royal, that meant that the royal family had to establish that you were worthy of their praise and their patronage. And Royal Dalton achieved that in the late 1800s, so that is an earlier piece. And then this is a tapestry style earthenware, something along the lines of what Royal Beirut made in porcelain. This will date to about 1900, very pretty and it looks like linen on the surface. And then this very cool looking owl is from the 70s, but this is Goebel, the same company that made Hummels in Germany. Cute piece, love the eyes. One thing to consider when you see a real bargain like this $59 light Allure lamp, very similar to one that I sold for $225 in Florida, is there may be a reason it's such a good price. Well, that looks fine, but wah, wah, there we go broken spot. It's a shame because it's a pretty lamp. If I could fix it, it's worth it. So they have a good collection of still banks here. I like the buildings and the Native Americans. And then the bookends too. These are all things I really like to buy. These are understood to be retail price, however. I don't see anything that's inexpensive enough for me to buy for resale. But I see some pieces I really like, especially Humpty Dumpty. And this guy, the elephant bank where you push the tail and it's a mechanical. The coin flips into his head. I like mechanical banks a lot. That's a later one in aluminum. So I wanted to point out some Vaseline or uranium glass like the Fostoria heirloom with the saw teeth because it comes from a lot of different companies, a lot of different eras. Heise made the little pony but that's probably a more recent remake. Fenton made the fern pattern there, the bowl on top as well as that cruet there. The lamp is an old one from the late 1890s, early 1900s, but the Vaseline glass whale is going to date to almost 1980. And this is Candlewick glass by Imperial. This was a tableware line. And then the hat is Fenton, so a lot of different forms of glass have this property. Lots to choose from. And speaking of choice, wow, what a selection of beaded purses and geometric purses, 1920s era flapper stuff, German steel beaded, Mandalian and Whiting and Davis hand painted with the fringe. You've got a coin purse. This is just a really nice collection. And prices are reasonable. I've gotten these prices, I see anywhere from 
60 to 135 depending on the piece and that's right in the ballpark i would love to have this collection to sell but some other lucky dealer has it instead so i'll have to go shop some more more to come soon folks in the meantime, this is George the Antique Nomad on Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and it's nice to be with you again. We'll see you from some other beautiful place soon. Thanks for joining me again in the fun and fascinating antique community here where online meets the real world. Please click the subscribe button below, click the bell to be notified when new videos upload, leave a comment below, and hit thumbs up to like this video. Links to our online social media daily posts and our items for sale are in the description. This is George at the Antique Nomad. Bye for now.